Okay, hello and welcome to part two of the basics and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very first interior and go over some of the interface and the many different um, aspects of what what you can do with it and all the little shortcuts and stuff to uh, help make your level design and uh, your interiors much more easier and much more efficient. So I'm gonna get to that first thing First things first, got to load the Fallout ESM. And of course, remember, this can take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to pause for a second and just let this load. Okay, so I have the Fallout ESM loaded. And first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger so that I, I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go over here into World and I'm going to click on Cells. And this, is, this has uh, the list of all the cells that are in the game. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new cell. And I can name it whatever I want. Um, normally I like to use the naming convention of putting 00 before each cell so that it ends up uh, appearing at the very top. And I'm going to call this tutorial cell. Tutorial cell. And hit OK. And so now my cell is created. It's now um, listed here in, in the list with, with all the uh, other ones from the game. And um, don't have to worry about this just yet. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to name it a uh, tutorial cell. And you'll see it'll, it'll show up over here. It'll, sh it'll say the name is tutorial cell. And whenever you load the cell, that's, that's what it's, what it's going to say. Like when you go up to a door, it's going to say tutorial cell. And okay so common data let's let's just go over this real quick you got the default acoustic space like all this stuff these are all templates that were created for the game and you could choose one of these um, it will what, what it will do is it will give a little bit of reverb so that it sounds like you're inside of a room or you're inside of a huge cave or some industrial area and it has like all these little sound effects that uh, would normally come with um, like little machinery and stuff that you can hear that that would what you would expect inside those kinds of rooms or caves like uh, like vibrations coming off of the walls and stuff so um, I'm gonna choose something like uh, oh these are um, as well these are for uh, exterior exterior cells like if, when you walk into a room and, I mean a house or something but it's inside of the world space rather than an interior so I'm uh, just going to go with something, if I can find it. You know what, I'll, I'll go with uh, Museum Wood Creaky. And the, the music, you could, ch you could uh, choose the type of music, um, something like a dungeon or something. So I think that would be good. Uh, dungeon would probably, probably be good as Dungeon A. And Image Space, that's not important because we're not... Uh, we're not, we're not going to be doing any LOD right now. So, um, lighting, you got lighting templates. Right here you could set everything that you want, like fog and, um, like, you could totally make your own kind of a fog effect if you want it far or near, all that stuff. But there's a lot of options here, and, uh, you know, it could be really overwhelming tweaking it uh, one thing at a time. And you've got your ambient lightings and uh, the, your directional lightings. But let's not use any of that. Let's just find something where it has everything all set up for us. And these templates, um, I'd probably go with something like, I'll just go with default Z cell. And as you can see, it's it set up all the, all the colors just like slightly different. And um, from here, you can actually set this up. So if you don't want to inherit everything from this, and you just want to tweak them out yourself, you can do that if you wanted to. But I'm just going to leave it like that. And um, over here, you got your directional ambient lighting. And um, what this will do is like um, it will make your your cell not completely black, but it will um, emit like some kind of some kind of light, so you can see a certain distance. Um, what I would say. I'm going to turn off, uh, I think it's uh, this one right here. Select color, I mean color. See, now this, all these uh, things become available. And, you know, this is, this is probably a little bit too bright. Uh, for my tastes, anyways. 
I'll put it something like 12. I'm going to hit 12. Whoops, one, not 122. And put it all to 12, 12, 12. I'll leave that at 10, 12, 12, 12. And all it's going to do is just going to create like a kind of a gray effect, but you you could at least see some of the some of the area, and all that you could you could just pretty much just tweak that as much as you want. I just hit apply, and okay, so the tutorial cell is created. I'm going to load it up. And so now I'm in my tutorial cell, even though you can't see anything. But you know what? Let me save it right now, real quick. And just give it a name, like a tutorial cell. And okay, so cell set up, you don't see anything. It looks exactly the same, but I should be able to add some, um, some objects. So I go to go into world objects and go into static. And this is where all the um, statics that you use to make your level are going to be um, placed in and um, everything has a naming convention some things like for example set dressing all this stuff you don't want to use those because those, everything in set dressing is usually usually like um, pieces or parts uh, that go in your cell to kind of just uh, decorate it what you're going to want to do inside of static is you're want, going to want to go into architecture and all these all these things have a certain naming convention like building block uh, story com and all that stuff you see watch watch what happens when i drag this in here you end up getting a piece of like um like a wall or something from that belongs to um, this um, building brick story whatever it is and you can build something out of that what I'm going to look for is something that I can use for interiors. Uh, normally, probably WLP, is it? You know what? Actually, I think I'm in the wrong area. I think it's under interiors, isn't it? Interiors, yeah, my bad. Everything here, this is what I'm looking for. And what, what's in here, everything with the naming convention here, with the, normally BLD or whatever, choose that BLD, WLP. I use this one quite often, so so everything here shows up, and you got your walls, and you got your um, your sockets. What socket is for is like creating doors and stuff like that, or windows. Like everything is all set up here for you, and you got these uh, th these things are called static collections, and what these things are. It's just a combination of different things on different um, parts of these things over here. And I just put it together to make your your level design easier. But um, I'm not going to be using that right now. I'll just look for anything BLD and see which one I probably want to do. Building concrete, building deco. Let, let me have a look at this one right now. Building deco. Because this one probably kind of look like um I would guess yeah I'd probably look like something like a like a museum or something or a library you know, I don't think uh, building deco none of those building wood building wood that sounds okay Can you have a look quick look at it no definitely not so as I just go through these and I'm just seeing which which of these I want to use. Yes. Okay, so that one. And here's something that is very important that you, sh you should always uh, keep in mind is to use your snap snapping tools. And one thing when you're um, dragging something in here, you're going to want to keep it at your, um, at your position zero always when you're starting out because it makes everything a lot easier, especially if you're doing LOD and you're placing everything in a certain certain place. So, okay, so I dragged that in and I got my snapping tools all set up. And so, basically right now, I'm going to snap, I'm going to use my snapping tools to be completely, um, it's going to, the reference is going to be set up uh, to this. So everything is, is going to follow this, this wall mesh that I have here. So I press Control D and I duplicate it. And now I'm able to just move this over here to the side. 
I see to make things even easier so that um, building your your interior is a lot quicker is to make the snap to grid a lot bigger like 128 it always goes uh, by um, multi multiplies by 2 the powers of 2 and so 64 would be half of um, 128 units and 128 units is just about uh, the size of this thing so like when I move this it's gonna move about halfway so 256 units is the entire distance between here this point and that point so I'm gonna do that a couple of times see it makes things a lot easier and so I just take all that and I duplicate it again and holding the right uh, right mouse button I'm able to rotate it just just by uh, simply clicking and dragging it so again I move that like that and I use the shortcut keys of Z X and C to just uh, move around my pieces as, as such and press control D again Oops. I'm not sure if that's completely snapped to the right uh, area there we go so I would say that looks pretty good it's not exactly lined up the way I wanted to but I could just I can fix that right now just by going here again and um, selecting a smaller smaller number and so I can snap this uh, as accurate as possible it doesn't seem to be snapping perfectly so I'll make sure that all the parts yeah okay so that looks good so I'm just about ready to um, close up my, w my walls over here and make my very first room it's a little big for a room but uh, I think that's good enough and so um, I'm using building wood uh, what does that say PBG wall 7 whatever and I'm gonna copy copy the name of this uh, mesh over here static object and I'm just gonna put that over here in the filter and um, delete all this so that all the static objects they appear here so now I have all this thing to go through to find out everything that I want to use and believe me this can get really complicated you you can click on it and have a quick look at look at it but you really have to do it from memory and just kind of begin to remember one trick as you can see this all the walls they kind of look um they, they look rather repetitive so one thing I'd, I'd like to do is to do this and just click some random walls and hold the alternate key and uh, use the mouse wheel to change 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 among them and I can um, just switch them around as such just to give them uh, a more natural feel so that it doesn't look redundant so let me just fix up my walls real, real quick over here and remember I'm using the um, the alternate key and um, and I'm holding and I'm um, scrolling the mouse wheel So there, now the walls don't look as redundant. I hit Control S to save it, everything that I've done. And I'm gonna use one of these static meshes because I don't feel like um, doing the floors and the ceilings um, all separately. I'm gonna just do it all at the same time. So I'm gonna look through all these uh, static um, collections. And let me see here. Let's see if I got anything. If not, I guess I'm going to probably have to do both of, both of them separately, which I don't want to. I think it's here, room mid. Yes, that has to be it. Okay, so let me just get that over here and just uh, align that correctly with the, the rest, of, rest of the room. So there, and using my snapping tools again, set it up so that I have 128 units
All right, so there. And to make the process a lot quicker, what is this? Something happened there. I just select all of them and I press Control D, I duplicate it. Select them all, make the process quicker, duplicate it. And there it is, the room, it's done. Control S. As you can see, I kind of screwed up over here. I don't know why this is off. So I'm just going to fix that real quick. It's snapping, um, it's snapping directly to, I guess, the original snapping setup. So there, I corrected the, um, the positioning of the wall. So, because you really don't want to have any holes in in any of the areas. Because if this thing's like like this, when you see out here, you're going to have a huge, um, huge weird-looking. Uh, Hall of Mirrors effect. And so the whole thing is set up. There's no lights in it, but the room is set up. And um, as, as you can see, you can still see very faintly, you can see um, the walls and stuff. And that is because of the this. This stuff that I set up over here. So you can see it faintly. And when I add a light in here, one thing, one, one quick way they have this, um, like this startup thing where, I, I believe this is it, uh, set up default lights. As I hit that, yeah, so there it is. It added a bunch of lights in there into my, um, to my interior, but I don't want to use that. I like to just do it from, from scratch makes it a lot better to to do it yourself rather than use that thing so okay so there there's my first room and instead of um, instead of going d directly to game what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make a copy of the whole room and I'm gonna move it over to the side and I'll show you a little trick over here um, so this thing now we got these two rooms all set up and what you could do is you could connect these two rooms together and uh, start building your levels so I'm gonna go through all the different uh, stuff that I have here and see as I was holding alternate and uh, moving the mouse wheel um, I've been able to um, find a, a doorway uh, static collection so that's what I'm gonna use and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one over here I'm gonna copy this one Turn around. Hold, holding the holding the right mouse button and um, just dragging it that that rotates it. Just a reminder. And I'm going to delete that that thing that I uh, put there. So now I have enough room to make a little connection between these two um, these two rooms. But it won't exactly fit there correctly. So I'm going to move this. I could either move this closer and it'll just be like. Uh, It'll just be like from room to room, but what I want to do is I, I want to get this thing and I just want to move it over a little bit more and use one of these things to create like a, like a hallway. So there. And probably if I search through these enough, I could probably find a hallway. I mean, I know there has to be one. Hallway number two, let me see, let me have a look. That's like a hallway dead end. I think that this would be good enough. So, yeah, that's it. That's actually it right there. Okay, so let me position this. It looks like I'm just a little bit off with the rooms. Okay, so there. That seems to be almost correct. All I need to do is I just need to place these walls around it. So there it is. Now I have two rooms connected. I'll hit Control Save. 
and I got my doorway there, but as you can see, there, there's, um, like, um, there's like a hole that you could see outside of the, um, of the level. So there's uh, something here called, I'm not sure if it's this one, the sockets. It's, no, it, it can't be this one, but I have a look anyways. No, it's not socket. Ah, here it is. It's, they're called plug. So plug for the doors would be this one. So that would be wall plug, A, bot, door, zero, one, whatever. But, um, okay, so that's it. I'm duplicate that as well. And so now we have these two rooms connected. And this thing is a little bit, uh, it's, it's kind of big, but uh, it gives you enough room to work with and kind of build a, uh, Built some stuff in, inside this, these uh, these rooms. Like I could probably make like a second floor over here with some stairs or something. I mean, really, it's just up to your creativity and uh, whatever idea you come up with. So as well, I can um, change these around a bit so that it's not as redundant. Although it's not really necessary because uh, I'm not really going to notice it, but still. just for the purpose of good uh, good practice developing good practice in this uh, in all this stuff it's it's uh, it's good to know because it makes your level design a lot easier and a lot quicker you don't want to end up into too many problems because once you get frustrated all right so two rooms are set up okay so here I am in my mods list and um, if you did everything correctly then your um, ESP should appear in in the list as well and in order to get into your um, cell into the cell that you just made you have to first enable it and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, restart fallout and gonna gonna load up the cell real quick to to show you what it looks like okay, so here I am in the fallout for a uh, title screen and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit the tilt key to open up the console and I'm gonna type in COC and the name of the cell that I just created. So that would be 00 tutorial cell. And it should begin loading up the cell. And as you can hear, the dungeon music begins to play. And here I am in the cell. Oh, it's kind of kind of foggy in here still. Need some tweaking to do. So but anyways, you could see the cell completely empty. Hear the creaking of the walls, and so here's the first cell. It's uh, bare bones, and uh, I could begin putting this into the game and start detailing it. So, those are the basic fundamentals of um, how to create your first interior. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to connect it to the world space and further detailing and getting this thing lit and tweaking it to to how to make it look pretty pretty cool and um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial it's getting a little bit long now so I'm gonna cut it short and um, I'm gonna cover the rest of the stuff in part three so for this one I'm just gonna be going over some more things remember the shortcuts they are gonna help a lot also mess around with uh, with this stuff the the snapping snapping tools they are important and uh, just pretty much um, just tweaking these to your own liking and making sure that there are no holes in the wall or anything like that and just uh, try to keep it as clean and simple as as simple as possible so that you could follow and you don't end up uh, making mistakes along the way further complicating things or having performance issues and stuff like that so I'm also going to cover uh, a few more things um, Especially because when it comes to interiors, this is the this is going to be the part you're going to spend the most time on. It's it's really it's all about naming convention, uh, memorization. Everything uh, ha has a purpose. It's everything's designed so that you could piece together your own own levels. And like plugs, like I said, these plugs they either are windows or they're doors. Some of them on the second floor, as such here. This is this is like a double door, so whatever the, whatever is a double door, you also 
are going to want to uh, look over here in door and um, typically I think it's DBL or something or oops, DBL is it or DB yeah DB door and uh, as you can see I just get one of those and I um, turn off the snapping tool for a second and that's that's what it's about it's about uh, placement and just um, making sure that it all serves the the purpose that you're looking for so the next one next tutorial I'm going to be covering doors and how to connect this to the world space so that's it for now if you appreciate what I'm doing here, you could check out my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash northern springs. It is a DLC sized mod, which adds a whole new area for you to explore and find new stories, pretty much everything. For only a dollar a month, you can help me so I can grow and continue doing this. If you want to download any of my mods, there are links in the description below. Keeping a close eye on Terry the drunk here. It's too unpredictable. Who knows what he might do? Hi. Never seen you here before. Welcome to Orchard Field. I own this small town. You're not a raider, are you? You don't look like one. Oh, good. We've been having problems with raider attacks for years now since Orchard Field happens to be smack in the middle of three raider gangs. We've been fighting them off, but they keep on coming back. They've already killed both of my parents. My brother, Scott, and I are all that's left. Over time, a few new people started to settle here, trying to get away from the Commonwealth and dangerous forests. Some did not make it. But with the constant attacks, we're not ever so sure how long we can hold them off anymore. If you want to help, you can talk to Cassandra. She's lived here the longest with us. Or Harper as well. Harper lost his boy to a Mire Alert Queen nearby. If you help him, I'll personally honor you with our trust and residence into Orchard Field. Ha, 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 ha.